Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, as all of you are aware of, Guru Maharaj is sharing nectar on Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita from last few days, uh, chapter 22, Madhya Leela. Uh, this is pure devotional service. And uh, today we will continue on uh, verse 91. Hare Krishna, thank you. Over to you, Guru Maharaj. Jaya, Jaya, Sri Chaitanya, Jaya, Nityananda, Jaya, Dvaita Chandra, Jaya, Gaur, Bhakta, Vindam, Varahutte, Vahadwala, Arjantar Gavastiti, Param Huta Vahadwala, Pararantam Gavastiti, Nasarao Sauri Chita Vimukha, Jana Samvasa Vaisa Sam. Hmm. So this verse here is a continuation from the previous verse. It is better to accept the miseries of being encaged with bars and surrounded by burning flames than to associate with those bereft of Krishna consciousness. So this association is a very great hardship. This is a quotation from the Katyayana Samhita. Next verse. Madraksha hmm. Krishna Puna Kachit Abhi Bhagavan Bhakti Hina Manushan. One should not even see those who are bereft of devotional service in Krishna consciousness and who are therefore devoid of pious activities. <laughs> this verse illustrates these, the supreme emotional service. They don't even want to see the non devotees because when they see the non devotees, they become unhappy. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Eka sabbachara ara vanashrama dharma achin chana hanalaya krishnaika sharana. Without hesitation, one should take exclusive shelter of Lord Krishna with full confidence, giving up bad association and even neglecting the regular the principles of the four varnas and four ashrams. That is to say, one should abandon all material attachments. Hmm. So attachments for the varnas and ashrams is another time of material attachment. And the idea is that it, it superimposes its position where attachment to Krishna is the only business of the devotee in devotional service. Here it says taking shelter of Krishna with full confidence that knowing that by giving up all other association and all of the principles of elevation, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, take exclusive shelter and surrender to me, Krishna will take care of his devotee 100%. <laughs> One doesn't need support from anything else, only Krishna. Next verse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Sarvadharmapurikshitjambhammikam saranam vajam maham tvam sarvapapidyo moksa yashyami ma suchaha. Abandon, after giving up all kinds of religious and occupational duties, if you come to me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and take shelter, I shall give you protection from all of life's sinful reactions. Do not worry. So in this verse, Krishna gives assurance that there's no need to take shelter anywhere else but me. And if you do, you'll get full protection. This I guarantee. And when Krishna gives his guaranteed word, especially to his devotee, it becomes an absolute principle. <laughs> Next verse. Bhaktavatsala Kritagya Samarta Vandaya Hena Krishna Chari Pandita Nahi Bhaje Anye Anya Lord Krishna is very kind to his devotees. He is always very grateful and magnanimous. And he possesses all abilities. A learned man does not give up Krishna to worship anyone else. Srila Prabhupada's purport, an intelligent person gives up the company of those who are attached to women and bereft of Krishna consciousness. One should be free from all kinds of material attachment and should take full shelter and all the speed of Krishna. Krishna is very kind to his devotees. He is always grateful. He never forgets the service of a devotee. He is always complete, also completely opulent and all powerful. Then why should one take shelter of a demigod and leave Lord Krishna's shelter? If one worships a demigod and leaves Krishna, he must be considered the lowest fool. Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padati Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorvani Pucharine Yerasesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Panchakalpa Tarubis Chakri Pasindu Veva Chapatitanam Pavane Gyo Vaishnavi Vyona Mahomaha Jaisi Krishna Chaitanya Pavuna Tinanda Sri Advaita Gadadar Sivasari Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we might use an analogy or a comparison Whereas a man has been get, got the association of a very wealthy person, and the person who is very wealthy is very magnanimous, very generous. And he says to his this other person, just ask for me anything you would like, and I will grant that immediately. The person says, Well. Thank you very much, but just give me a pinch of ash. Just a pinch of ash. Now the donor would think, well, I'm offering him so much and he's just asking for something not even that has any value at all. So here we can use this analogy to say that now Krishna is all powerful. He is the supreme controller. He has control of all the opulences throughout existence. And he can give complete protection. Sometimes they say God is omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. Uh, and he is completely powerful to give protection against any situation. It's explained Rake Krishna Mordeke, Mordeke Krishna Rake If 
so Krishna wants to give protection, nothing, no one, no power in existence can harm even the hair on the body of that devotee. We have the example of Prahlad Maharaj, Srila Haridas, that poor both, how they were, you know, attacked and there was an attempt to kill them both because of their devotional life. They stuck to the devotional life. They took full shelter of the Lord and the Lord not only gave them full protection, but ele elevated them to his personal association. Um, this is Lord Krishna. Uh, he is the all powerful supreme personality of Godhead, but he is also very kind and very magnanimous, very inclined, as it says here, he is very kind to his devotees. He's grateful, as it mentions in the previous verse, any devotional service that was done by anyone at any time throughout existence, he never forgets that. And he magnifies that devotional service to be something greater than it actually is. And that is Krishna. <laughs> He is very grateful and always inclined to uh, serve his devotees in whatever way it's needed. I think if we reflect in a very thoughtful way in our, in our previous situation, our present situation, and look at it in a very ob objective way, we can see that what we are and what we have is not anything of our own successful endeavors. Personally, I can see that with myself, that even though we make mistakes and uh, do other things that are apparently not very beneficial to ourselves, Krishna is always there. He somehow covers that over and elevates one because he sees that the Bodhi is trying to serve him. And therefore Krishna always fortifies anything that the Bodhi wants, Krishna gives. Unless that the Bodhi wants something that is against his own spiritual advancement, and Krishna may not give that because that is his love for his devotees. He doesn't want his devotees to go away and somehow be illusioned by the material energy. So he may not supply that. But sometimes in some cases for neophyte devotees, not for those who are more advanced, for neophyte devotees, he won't, uh, he'll give them something material just to make them happy so they engage in devotional service. But usually for those who want Krishna only, that is called advancement in devotional service. When you want only Krishna, that is a sign of spiritual advancement. Then Krishna makes sure that he arranges everything in such a way that you come back to him in devotional service. That's Krishna. <laughs> um, his kindness, his magnanimity, just like it's mentioned in one verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam that uh, he appears in the life of someone to inspire them in a particular type of service. That devotee gets some inspiration either directly from Krishna or in a dream, which is also direct. And uh, they get ideas on how to serve the Lord. They carry it out. It becomes notable, no, noticeable. It becomes something noteworthy, and other people are, glorify that devotee. Krishna supplies the idea. He supplies the ingredients for carrying it out. He also says in the Bhagavad Gita, he supplies the ability to carry it out. He gives all these things, and he gives the credit to his devotee. <laughs> he's supplying everything, and he's also doing everything. But he gives his credit to his devotees. 
um, he'll come to a dream and say, well, I need a temple built here. So uh, build me a temple. So the devotee will get inspired by that dream and build a nice temple and the devotee will get all the credit for glorifying the Lord with a beautiful mandir and serve the Lord nicely. Uh, for Madhavendra Puri, he appeared in the dream and told him, hey, uh, here I am. I'm buried in, a, in this forest out there. Uh, follow my directions and I'll show you where I am and then bring some men with some, some shovels and picks and dig me out. So he did. And he found a beautiful deity, which was the Gopal deity, which was later installed in uh, Srinachi, actually, Srinachi. And um, Laravendra Puri became famous for finding the Gopal deity and reestablishing the most beautiful worship, all by the arrangement of the Lord. <laughs> But that's how he, he glorifies his devotee. Um, when Krishna was in Dwarka and he was meeting in the assembly house with many of the leading personalities in Dwarka, they were discussing different plans. One particular messenger came to the door during one meeting and the messenger was brought in and he had a message in the form of a note to Krishna. In that note, it said, this note was written by the uh, 16,000 kings who were captured and imprisoned by Jarasandha. And they glorified Krishna in the note, but they, at the same time, they asked Krishna to please come and save them. Krishna read the note, and at the same time, the meeting in the assembly house was to arrange for the Rajasuya sacrifice for King Yudhisthira after he had taken the throne and that the Pandavas had been victorious in the battle. So there were two things that happened at the same time. Krishna had to choose between going, killing Jarasandra, because that was the prelude to kill Jarasandha and release the kings. And that wasn't going to be an easy job because Jarasandha was very powerful. And uh, the other one was they had this Rajasuya sacrifice and there was, Yudhisthira wanted Krishna, Krishna to be honored in the Rajasuya sacrifice. And so both were, were major, major services for Krishna. So what did Krishna do? He, uh, he didn't respond one way or the other. What was he going to do? He said, my devotee Uddhava, he is very confident to understand this situation. So I'm going to put it into his hands and he will make the decision. And whatever he decides, I will carry it out. Krishna knew what to do already. He had the plan already worked out. But his love for Uddhava, was, he wanted to show his love for Uddhava by giving Uddhava the credit. And so Uddhava was given that, that uh, apparent uh, dilemma what to do. And Uddhava, using his intelligence, came up with the perfect solution that was satisfying to everyone. And he basically said the first thing she would do was to kill Jarasandha. And that would free the world from a lot of the opposition kings that were still there. Because were, Jarasandha had supporters also. If Krishna killed these kings first and Jarasandha, then the Rajasuya sacrifice would undoubtedly be very successful. But with these other kings still present, it may not have been so glorious or so successful. And there may have been opposition to the Rajasuya sacrifice. And there was, Shishupal actually came and tried to destroy it. 
And then Krishna killed him right at the, at the sacrifice. And so um, the decision made by Uddhava was unanimously accepted by everyone, including King Yudhisthira, who was willing to wait until Jarasandha was killed and then the kings were freed and then the uh, arena for the sacrifice was in place and everything was done accordingly. So Krishna knew that this was the actual plan, but he didn't say it because he wanted to give Uddhava credit. So this is another example of how Krishna works. He, uh, he likes to give his devotees credit. Uh, and he does that all the time. He inspires the devotees either directly from within or indirectly from without. And the devotee does things and Krishna gives the intelligence, he gives the ingredients, he gives mm, the way to proceed when there are difficulties, everything. He says, Sarvasya Jahamrati Sani Vistoma Tatsmirti Agyanama Hohamcha. I am remembrance, I am forgetfulness, I am knowledge. And this verse from the Bhagavad Gita explains that all of these characteristics are facilitated by Krishna. The devotee has a desire and Krishna provides everything. And Prabhupada would always say that too, that we, all we can do is desire. But desire is an active principle. When, it, when we desire in a certain direction, we move either the spiritual energy or the, sp or the material energy. If we desire something material and we start to move that energy in a certain direction, and then we start moving in that direction ourselves and things start to develop. And when we desire Krishna and we desire devotional service, then things start to unfold in that area and everything starts to develop accordingly. So everything, all we can do is desire. <laughs> That's all we can do. <laughs> uh, and once desire is there, and to strengthen one's desire in Krishna consciousness, one has to associate with devotees in order to gain that strength of desire, and at the same time, very seriously execute one's spiritual practices, chanting at the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra daily, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, and then that strengthens the desire and the desire moves in the spiritual way. So these verses show the greatness of Krishna and how it's interesting because here we are in the material world and somehow or other we came here due to our inordinate desires. But Krishna doesn't say, oh, well, they ran away from me. Let them suffer. No, he's always trying to bring them back. And at the same time, while he's bringing them back, he gives them the chance to serve him. And they become glorious through that service. This is Krishna. <laughs> he's very inclined towards his devotees. As Prabhupada said, in this purport, he is always grateful and he never forgets the service of the devotee. That means even if you did one little service, maybe 20 lifetimes ago, Krishna never forgot that and never forgets that. That's Krishna. So why, and then here, why would anybody give up Krishna's shelter or refuse to take Krishna's shelter and look for shelter somewhere else. Even a powerful deva, such as Lord Brahma or Lord Shiva or uh, uh, Agni Dev or Yamaraj, powerful demigods, 
who would who would leave Krishna's shelter in order to take their shelter? It says only a fool. Not only a fool, but there are different levels of fool here. Prabhupada said he must be considered to be the lowest of all fools. <laughs> But once you know a little bit about the glory of Krishna and the qualities of Krishna and his love for his devotee, anyone who leaves Krishna consciousness, uh, I'm just thinking of certain personalities come to my mind who have given up Krishna consciousness and went back to the material energy again to somehow try to squeeze out a little bit of happiness in material life. And I'm thinking of them and I'm reading this particular purport here. What would make anybody do that is just, there is no logic, there's no intelligence, there's no, it's just as here, the lowest of fools. Not only is Krishna so great, he is always grateful also. And that's interesting because he doesn't need anything. He's all, he's the one that's giving everything, but still he's grateful. The father gives the, the, uh, the little son a little allowance and allow the son goes out and buys a little gift for the father and gives it to him as a present. The father says, oh, you're so nice. Oh, you are so wonderful. And he showers his affection on the son. It was his money in the first flake, the father. And the son somehow or other did something. Yeah, thank you. Very touching. It's true. When we can keep that in mind, then there's no way, there's no other place to go but the lotus feet of the Lord in devotional service. And even if Krishna apparently allows his devotee to be put in a difficult situation, in the long run, it's for the benefit of the devotee. Sometimes that happens, but that is simply Krishna's way of bringing the devotee to a higher stage of Krishna consciousness. Okay, so yeah, we'll uh, conclude here and open it up for discussion. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, uh, for nice uh, nectar. And uh, I would request all the devotees uh, to please switch on your video. Uh, it will be really great if everybody, all the devotees can switch on. So it looks like everybody is present in the class and fully manifested, <laughs> as Guru Maharaj said. And uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, if you have any questions, any comments or any relations, uh, you can unmute yourself. You can raise hand in the uh, applications or you can type in the chat window. Uh, Guru Maharaj, would you like me to give one minute summary or we should directly jump on questions, please? I like your summaries. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, um, you, always Krishna... add, you always add something extra to the summary, so I'm just waiting to hear. <laughs> <laughs> no, Guru Maharaj, it's all just whatever you have given, uh, which I can recollect in my memory. Uh, so, Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, Guru Maharaj try to, I tried to capture this in four key points. Uh, first point, Guru Maharaj said that uh, when we want only Krishna, then uh, that's advancement in Krishna consciousness. So that's very important to remember. Second, uh, uh, Krishna is supplying everything, including uh, all plants, intelligence, ability, but still he gives all credit to his devotee. And uh, as Guru Maharaj said, devotee can only have one thing uh, which is in their control and that's a desire. And desire can be material or spiritual, but for a devotee, there is nothing else than Krishna. So that's the only desire. And 
when we have that desire, then Krishna is not showing his greatness, but he is going to show his. Sorry, he is of course great, but he is going to show his greatness when devotees just only surrendering to Krishna. So that's the summary, uh, Guru Maharaj. Uh, sorry if I missed something, please. Thank you. So Shri Devi Mataji, if I'm not wrong, you raised your hand. Sorry, I missed that. Yes, Shri Devi Mataji, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vindavan uh, Prabhu. And my humble obeisance is to you. My humble obeisance is to you, Gurudev. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories uh, to your holiness. Thank you for reminding us about the greatness of Krishna and how wonderful Krishna is, how kind he is and how magnanimous he is, how protective he is. We need to be reminded of these things, I think. So thank you for bringing it out. As he was speaking on this very last verse about why would anybody want to go to anyone else, I am reflecting on a recent development which happened in the New Orleans temple in the courtyard. They have erected a small shrine, a tiny little shrine, in which there is uh, Lord Ganesh, Lord Shiva, and people who come into the temple, they say, oh, I have no time, so I will just, you know, offer obeisances here and go. <laughs> and so they're all coming, they're worshipping Ganesh, people bring bananas and incense, and some of them do some little pujas over there, and they do not even enter inside the temple to see Krishna or anything. And they just go from there. And I've seen initiated devotees also coming, offering obeisances, offering something to the shrine. And of course, I think they also go inside to worship Krishna. But I'm a little curious, what is the mentality which makes them want to worship Ganesh and Krishna? Is it that if I please them, I'll get all the material benedictions I want quickly. Well, Krishna will take his own sweet time and who knows if I'll ever get them. I don't know. I think maybe you can answer that question better than I can. <laughs> I, 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 this is, we, we are promoting the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, not any demigods. So nowhere in our movement do we have, you know, deities of demigods in our temples. Prabhupada wanted to exclusively understand it. This is our, our focus is on Sri Krishna, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is also Krishna, and of course, the, the, the different manifestations of Krishna. But no devas. These are, these are de demigods. Um, I've seen one temple, which is a very prestigious temple. They have a little uh, deity of Ganesh over the top of the door before you go in. But Ganesh is just, uh, he's more like the guard on the door, or the protector, um, and not an object for uh, doing formal worship. So if people are coming and they're getting cheated because they, if they come, they should get the opportunity to see the See the, uh, the beautiful deity of what is it? Sri Sri Radha. What is the name of the deities there? Radha Radha Kanta, the same. The sister temple. Beautiful. So they have the same name. Yeah, beautiful deities, Radha Radha Kanta. I've been to that temple many, many years ago. The deities are exquisitely beautiful. Both in both set of temples. Um, that darshan is just one of the nicest. So why would uh, anyone create something to divert people's attention away from that? It seems counterproductive. It is. And it's actually, uh, it's, it's actually hurting people because they, they, many of them will miss the opportunity to go see, you know, a lot of, a lot of content. Sri Sri Gornitai. They have Jagannath, right? Also? Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadramai. All three are there. And it's gorgeous, uh, yeah. very gorgeous darshan. Yeah, I don't know. That should be a, a uh, 
concern for the, the governing body commission in that area there. And I should be uh, brought to the attention of the GBC. Well, the GBC knows very well it's there, Guru Maharaj. It's been there now for several months. Now, we would have to hear the reason why he's allowing that. I don't know. Hmm. It doesn't sound right. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Guru Maharaj. The only thing, the only explanation I can say is that people who are not attracted to Krishna, but who are attracted to these other deities, they come to see these other deities, and then from there they can be ushered into the temple and get a chance to see Krishna. That's probably the only rationale that I could think of. <laughs> it's a way to attract people who are not attracted to Krishna, but attracted to these deities and then take them to the next step, hopefully. But there's also a strong sentiment that um... If I pray to Ganesh, if I pray to Shiva, then I'll get this car. I really need this car. But uh, I don't know if I go to Krishna, whether he'll give me a car or he'll take his own sweet time about it. But if I pray to Ganesh and Shiva, I'll get the car pretty quick because they easily please, uh, Ashuto, she's easily pleased. So that's not, yeah. our, that's not our movement. <laughs> our movement is not worshiping of the demigods for material benefits. Krishna smashes that in the Bhagavad Gita. In the seventh canto, he, he very strongly spoke, speaks against worshiping demigods. He says the demigods can suppose, are only agents for me. Ultimately, whatever the demigods can supply is coming from me anyway. Those who worship the demigods, he says it calls them Rita Gyan. Rita Gyan means very uh, no intelligence. A stunted, Rita Gyan means stunted intelligence. Gyan means intelligence. Rita means uh, dis, uh, delinquent or destroyed intelligence. Krishna uses those words. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we are interested in, Prabhupada taught us words. We're, we're moving about Krishna consciousness, not Ganesh consciousness or any other consciousness. We honor the devas, but we don't worship them. Krishna also mentions that in the Bhagavad Gita. Bhajate, the word bhajate is used in the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. And Prabhupada says this word applies only to Krishna. Bhaja, bhajate means to worship. The only worshipable object is Krishna. We honor other great personalities. We should honor the demigods. We should respect the demigods, but we don't worship the demigods. But isn't it true that if I want material gain, I have a better chance if I worship Lord Shiva? Uh, probably, yeah, but... Will, uh, will material gain be what you actually uh, really need? Everyone's getting material gain, whether they worship it or not. Some get it automatically by their karma. In the Western world, people don't even worship any kind of anyone. They just work hard to work for it. And according to their karma, they get it or they don't get it. Hmm. So what's the use of worship? Hmm. And who says you're going to be happy when you get it? Right, right. I'm just Krishna, really... Krishna says the fruits that the demigods give are temporary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and limited, yes. So those who are in knowledge understand the value of this Krishna consciousness, but those who are not in knowledge and who are swayed or, or dazzled by the illusory energy We'll go in for all these things. Is that right? Prabhupada said our temples should be places of education. 
when people mm -hmm. come in and they learn about Krishna. They learn about devotional service. Now, he says our temples are not just places of worship, but educational educational facilities to uh, further our knowledge and understanding of the Supreme Lord. That's why he said in these temples, they should have classes going on regularly, not just uh, like an hour a day, but throughout the day, there should be classes. Prabhupada's program was not being followed. <laughs> I can tell you that for sure in many points. Prabhupada says that we should have, be having classes throughout the day and in the evening we should be having kirtan in all our temples. Mm. That's written in Chaitanya Charitamrita. It's not just something Prabhupada said. He actually put it in a purport in the CC also. Mm. Classes throughout the day, three hours of kirtan in each and every one of our centers. How many of us are doing it? We're so fixed on deity worship that we don't. Uh, Pancharatriki is supported of Bhagavad Vidhi, but Pancharatri is not the goal. Deity worship, out of the five principles of devotional service that Lord Chaitanya taught to Rupa Goswami, he taught him five powerful principles. One, chanting the holy names of the Lord. Two, hearing and uh, uh, reciting Srimad Bhagavatam. Three, um, living in a holy place. Four, association with devotees. And five, worshiping the deity form of the Lord. Out of the five, only one is Pancharatriki, worshiping the deity. The other four are Bhagavad Bidhi. The Bhagavad Bidhi is the program that Lord Chaitanya gave us for, for, for Krishna consciousness. Deity worship is not the main thing. It's supportive of everything. It, purify, it helps one to get to the mode of goodness where one can chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. But that deity worship is also the worship of Krishna and Krishna's expansions has been given by the Acharyas, Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadra, Sita Ram, Lakshman, Hanuman. We have Gornitai. These are the these are the deities Prabhupada installed around the world for the main form of worship. He didn't install any other deities. These are the deities he installed. Did Prabhupada forget something? No. <laughs> he, he focused on what he wanted us to focus on, the essence of Krishna. So when um, the Indian guests say, you know, I want to keep everyone happy. I worship everyone. I worship Ganesh. I worship Shiva. I worship Lakshmi. I worship Saraswati. I worship Durga. I worship Krishna also. Like this, they say, I want to pacify everybody. I want to keep everybody happy. And so I do everyone's worship. No, no, because if you worship Krishna, all the other devas are happy automatically. These devas really are only for those who are materialistic bhaktas. But for devotees, anyone who worships the Supreme Lord they get the support of all the other devas also. Because all the other devas are angas of the Supreme Lord anyway. <laughs> Shiva that, worships. They, you know, Ganesh worships Lord Nisringadev. That's his mm -hmm. worship. Shiva worships Lord Ram. So these other powerful day, Brahma worships Lord Krishna. All of these other devas are worshiping the Supreme Lord. So if you worship what they're worshiping, you think they're not going to be happy? Hmm. But they're in a position to give facility for those who want material benefits. That's all. So if they're 
somewhat open, we can explain all these things from the Bhagavad Gita, explain uh, how Krishna is pleased when we worship him, when we chant his holy name and so on and so forth. But if they're closed off and they're fixed, then we should just leave them alone, right? <laughs> Always emphasize the positive, yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Sukhava. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to your lotus feet. Uh, Guru Maharaj, how are you feeling before I start? Are you feeling better? Um, today, yes. Today I'm a little bit better than yesterday. Good, good, good. So, slowly, slowly. Good. And Krishna's That's grace. Good. Guru Maharaj, um, in this matter, what Sri Devi Mataji asked, um, if I'm not making a mistake in Mahabharat, uh, Krishna asked Arjuna to pray to Lord Shiva for Pashupati Asra, isn't it? To the meditation. <laughs> so what, come on, ask the whole question. Don't just stop in the middle. So that's why I was just thinking, is it something like, um, can we do the prayers to Lord Shiva as well, or is it just not right for us? Well, do you want a Pashupati weapon too? Then you have to go to Shiva. <laughs> <laughs> If you ask Krishna for a Pashupati weapon, I'll say go to Shiva. <laughs> that doesn't mean you're worshiping Shiva. <laughs> your, your children come to you every day for food. Does that mean they worship you? No, they know where to go. <laughs> No, because I, you know, one of the devotee, one of the devotee argued with me in this one, so I don't know what to reply to that person. So I, I'm asking you, what shall I, what I could say to them? One time, somebody asked Prabhupada some question about something about some farming uh, knowledge about certain farming. Prabhupada said, "Go to a person who knows." <laughs> If you want practical knowledge or material things, go to where they are. If you want devotion, go to Krishna. <laughs> good answer, good one. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. You can pray to Lord Shiva for devotion to Krishna. That you can do. Because they can help you in your bhakti. You can pray to any of the demigods for devotion to Krishna. Mm -hmm. That's also recommended because as a devotee, we always think wherever I can get some mercy, then let me get that. So if someone is powerful and they're pleased with you, they can, they can offer prayers on your behalf also. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to worship them. All you have to do is pray to them for worship of Krishna. Okay. Thank you so much, Guru. Hare Krishna. Hare Thank Krishna. You. A funny story to tell you. Go on, Guru Maharaj. Did I tell you? Yes, please. Uh, I remember a couple, about a month ago, I wanted to call you up, right? To talk to you about something. Yeah. I was looking for your number. I was looking mm -hmm. for your phone number. So I found Sukhavaha and I pushed the button and I said, Hare Krishna. And I said, Sukhava. And she said, yeah, Maharaj, how you doing? Oh. And, I, and I said, oh, <laughs> wrong Sukhavaha. <laughs> It was my god it was my god sister Sukava. She answered oh. the phone. 
And she, and of course, she's very, we're very close to each other. So we were on the phone for about an hour and a half. I hadn't talked to her in about two years. So, and then she said, oh, there's another Sukhava in Iskan, huh? Hmm. She thought I, she said, oh, I thought I was the only one. <laughs> <laughs> So did you tell did you tell her that you named me on her like similar to your god sister's name? Yeah, I, I kind of said things like that to make her feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad Guru Maharaj, you got a chance to speak to your god sister just because of me. <laughs> that was good. It was I mean, she we caught up on the past for the last two hours on the phone. So <laughs> she's, she's, she's a wonderful, she's a wonderful devotee, amazing actually. She chants 16 rounds before she does anything every day. Me too, Guru Maharaj. She worships. Good, good, good. I listened to you that. Okay, we'll have to get back to the philosophical discussion here. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Radha Vinodhi Mathe Ji. Yeah, please go ahead. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Our glory is to Srila Prabhupada and our glory is to you. Uh, you mentioned this point that uh, how uh, Krishna uh, wants to give the uh, I would say uh, credit. Credit, yeah, the the credit to us, and uh, I was uh, start, I, I started to think how it relates to my life, and um, and I I really feel that uh, for many years I, I I was really into that mood that uh, how I should deserve better <laughs> more than I get, but but lately I just start really started to feel that uh, that. Uh, how much uh, Krishna uh, gives me a, a higher position than actually I'm in. And uh, I, I really just all the time feel this worry that uh, whenever some kind of attachment will uh, come and provoke this, this feeling of ungratefulness again, uh, <clears throat> I, I might feel uh, that way. And uh, is there any way how we could uh, how, how we could all the time feel this, uh, this, this gratefulness. So always appreciating what we get and, and not, not so much focusing on, on uh, what, what we don't get, because it's, it's like, a, like a little child when, when he doesn't get something for, from the parent. And, and it's, it's really, I just feel that this is a childish mentality, but, but uh, I'm really afraid that I will again uh, act like that sometime well that's because of habit but just reflect you have to remind yourself oh you know and then you see what krishna has given you in terms of what you need for devotional service what krishna has done to you as a person to elevate you to a higher level of spiritual life all of the things that you have have somehow brought upon by the grace of Krishna, we always reflect on that. I mean, you can also compare yourself to other people who are in a less fortunate situation and then feel grateful for the fact that you uh, have been blessed. When we think, oh, how much I'm suffering, then we think about People in the world are suffering. Some of them are suffering so bad that they, well, they don't even want to live any longer. And sometimes they take their life because the suffering is too much. And so if we have good health, we think I should be grateful for that. If we have opportunities for association, we should think I've been grateful for that. If we have access to uh, the uh, association of devotees and the spiritual master, we should be grateful for that. Mm, it's it's just, actually, it's just natural. Mm -hmm. uh, it just uh, made me think that 
uh, I feel that uh, it's it's uh, like a tendency to all the time uh, tell Krishna why we are grateful when, whenever we get something. But uh, does it help uh, if uh, we uh, each day uh, just take some time to to reflect on what we already yeah. got? Because yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's bhakti. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, maybe that, this would help because I. Uh, sorry. There is a verse in the Bhagavatam that speaks about gratefulness. Mm -hmm. It's in the third canto. If you live in India, the sunshine is mostly there all the time. And if you live in, in the UK, if you get the sunshine once in a while, you're grateful. <laughs> so <laughs> so in, if you're living in India and you're seeing the sun every day, you just think, well, I could be living in the UK and not getting half, the, half as much sunshine as I'm getting here. <laughs> so, so Prabhupada said, we should be grateful for the presence of the sun. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh... I, I I think that uh, we have this tendency that uh, that uh, we fear the value of something whenever we lose it. So uh, when when there are things uh, we we have, uh, it's uh, sometimes it's it's a habit to forget about that. And uh, yeah, I I'm, I'm also uh, I was just thinking that yeah, how I could learn this mood because uh, because attachment can be so strong and at that time I just forget all other things which I already have so so yeah I, I should really strengthen that mood but uh, yeah, this, just, this helps. just just schedule a grateful time of the day write it into your schedule <laughs> a particular <laughs> yeah, time of the day you could you can reflect on all of the things in your life that you could be grateful for. <laughs> Daily Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. And it's back. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was really helpful. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Any other questions? Uh, not any Guru Maharaj on the chat. Uh, Sudha Mataji has raised her hand. Mataji, please go ahead. Yes. Oh, thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Ganadana, uh, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All queries to Srila Prabhupada. Um, Guru Maharaj, I have a question about uh, demigod worship. Um, I have two questions demigod prasadam and festivals. So, uh, like uh, usually we host programs and we invite people and they come and eat our prasadam. So, and same time, like neighbors, they also host, they do like demigod worships and uh, uh, we have to go there. Is it okay to eat prasadam? Sometimes they just come and drop the prasadam. They do some puja worship of demigods like Ganesh puja or like Durga puja. And they just come and give the prasadam. So how should we like... Uh, um, they come to a Krishna conscious pro program Yes, and they, bring, and they bring prasadam that's been offered to the demigods. No, Guru Maharaj. They just bring it and we offer it here. Yeah. So when we do the programs. Um, yeah. Well, there is different standards. In our temples, no one can bring prasadam from the outside. Everything has to be done by the Brahmins in the temple. In, because Krishna explains that he does not accept food offered by non devotees. Well, we give facility for people to, in the outside for our home programs, there's some, some lead way there. We allow them to cook something and to offer it. We tell them to offer it to Srila Prabhupada on the altar like that. So also my question is, Guru Maharaj, like uh, 
um, so when I invite, they come like uh, recently, like Damodrash Kampuja. So when I hosted, they come and they also take prasadam. So they also do like Durga Puja and Ganesh festivals and they invite puja and I go there. So that case, is it okay to take prasadam, whatever they cook, like, um, or if I, how should I say, like, you know, handle nicer way. So if I don't want to eat prasadam over there, like. <laughs> Why would you go to a worship of the demigods? Uh, no, not uh, really to go to worship of the demigods. The, since they come here and I couldn't say no, I just go uh, just to like, you know, please them. So that's so. Yeah, no, invite them. You have to somehow or other invite them to understand that worship of Krishna is the best. Well, yeah, you have, you know, you're in Charlotte and you have your temple there. You have your Jagannath temple. So they can go there and worship. Uh, yes, Guruvaj, I go there. This is just like in my neighborhood sometimes, like, you know, um, just my neighbors, immediate neighbors, if they do anything, they just invite me. So I think you're wasting your time with that. Okay. You should time to worship Krishna, not the demigods. So I should not. You want to be socially proper, but yeah. Okay. The intelligent people will come to worship Krishna. Those who are stuck on the demigods, they'll stay on the demigods. Mm -hmm. You don't have to patronize their form of worship in order to attract them to us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. It's just. Uh, and then they're thinking you're just you're just like them. You're you're actually uh, validating a wrong philosophy that it's all the same. And this is very common within the Indian culture. Yatamata tatapata. You, whatever way you worship is fine. It doesn't matter as long as you worship. And that was by Ramakrishna. Yatamata tatapata. You're okay. I'm okay. Worship is absolute. It doesn't matter who you worship. But it does. Krishna says, Vrindavanath, mm. um, mm, uh, bring up Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, verse 25. Uh, Suda, read this verse 9.25 when it comes up. Okay. I'll chant the verse Yanti Deva Vratam Devam Pratin Yanti Pratin Vataha Bhutani Yanti Bhute Ja Yanti Mam Yajino Pimam. Okay, uh, translation uh, uh, Basila Prabhupada. Uh, those who worship the demigods will take birth among the demigods, and those who worship the ancestors go to the ancestors. And those who worship the ghosts and spirits will take birth among such beings. And those who worship me will live with me. Krishna makes it clear. According to how you worship, that's where you're going to go. Chant purport. What does Prabhupada say in the purport? Okay. Prabhupada is like, um, if one has any desire to go to the moon, the sun, or any other planet, one can attain the desired destination by following the specific Vedic principles recommended for that purpose, such as the process technically known as Darsha Pavanamasa. And these are vividly described in the fruitive activities portion of the Vedas, which recommends a specific worship of demigods situated on different heavenly planets. Similarly, one can attain the Pita planets by performing a specific yajna. And similarly, one can go to many ghostly planets and become a yaksha, rakshasa, or pishacha. So pishacha worship is called black arts or black magic. And there are many men who practice this uh, black art. And they think that it is a spiritualism, but such activities are completely materialistic. 
So similarly, a pure devotee who worships the Supreme Personality of Godhead only achieves the planets of Vaikuntha and Krishna Loka without a doubt. And it is very easy to understand through this important verse that if by simply worshipping the demigods, one can achieve the heavenly planets, or by worshipping the pitas, achieve the pita planet, or by practicing the black hearts, achieve the ghostly planets, why can the pure devotees not achieve the planet of Krishna or Vishnu? Unfortunately, many people have no information of these sublime planets where Krishna and Vishnu live, and because they do not know of them, they fall down. So even the impersonalists fall down from the Brahma Jyoti. So the Krishna conscious movement is therefore distributing sublime information to the entire human society to the effect that by simply chanting Hare Krishna mantra, one can become perfect in this life and go back home, back to Godhead. Hare Krishna. I think it's clear. Wherever you place your worship, that's where you're going to go. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. So, so I should avoid going to these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yes. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, Kala Kanti Radhika Mataji has typed one question. Um, she has mentioned, um, I go to see my family and they cook for me as they are non-devotee. They are not devotee and not even veg. So what shall I do? As it is difficult for them as they always been cooking for me when I visit them. And Mataji is talking about this in their family house. Well, when they cook for you, as long as they cook vegetarian, just take it and offer it to Srila Prabhupada in your mind. But Better if you cook, you cook something and bring it to them when you go see them. Yes. Tell them that you would like to cook for them because you're a cook anyway. I know that you're one of the main cooks in Bhakti Vedanta Manor. No, so. just baking. <laughs> I'm just baking, Guru. Yeah, but when you and when you can't somehow or other. Uh, get get away from that. Just in your mind, just just offer it in your mind to Srila Prabhupada and accept a little bit of the prasadam. Yes, thank you. Just to make them feel good. But what else can you do? You know. But if you make it a regular thing, it's not going to be good. So. No, it's uh, once in a year. Oh, that's that's okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Kalakanti. Nice to thank see you. you. So nice to see you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All goes to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you for the nice class, Guru Maharaj. And uh, um, as um, I have a question, like when coming to the desires, our mind, um, usually mind is very much trained, like we want both Krishna as well as the material desires, you know, whatever we yeah. have. So it's like, like a combination. It's like a combination always. Uh, I'm unable to think outside of that. And um, without any desires, uh, desiring only Krishna is uh, very far for me. And I'm not able to think in that direction at all. And um, so how to um, go into the direction and how to- um, Yeah, and do course of time. If you stay with the process, you continue to chant, you continue to uh, hear the message of Krishna coming from Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. If you get a chance to associate with devotees, your, your, your devotion to Krishna will increase and your desire for material things will reduce. 
it's automatic. Prabhupada uses the example of a fever. Uh, well, fever is uh, a unhealthy condition of the body. And you can tell how much you're getting well by how much the fever is reducing. So as the fever is reducing, the health of the body is returning. So in the same way, as we become more Krishna consciousness, part of the real more Krishna consciousness, then our material fever will, will diminish automatically. And so emphasize that. And every time you have a, you know, an opportunity to fulfill your material desires, just pick up your beats and start chanting. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just a matter of time, that's all. Mm -hmm. But every time you give in to the material desires, they become stronger. And that's the difficulty. Mm -hmm. Yes, good Maharaj. Thank you so much. <laughs> you look quite distressed. No, Guru Maharaj, no, I'm thinking. No, I have to remember this um, constantly. Um, whenever uh, I tend to um, desire more about any other things, I have to remind this constantly. Um, because- uh, Just um, look back, look, look back, look back to about a year ago. Mm. and see where you were a year ago and where you are now. You can see the difference. Yes, so in one year from now, you can, you'll be doing the same thing. <laughs> you stay with the process, it works. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. It's there. all because of your association and blessings, Guru Maharaj. And if you want to do the fast track, as they say, you know, it's like when you go to the airport, there's a there's a particular place you go, it's called the fast track, and they push you right through fast. Then um, association with pure devotees will move you along really fast. Yeah. That's <laughs> what I've things, been praying. Things that become accelerated, yeah. Yeah. That's what um, I've been praying in this new year that um, I want a devotees association, personal association, because uh, since last year we didn't have much of uh, yeah, always the Zoom Zoom classes here also locally, so just this year at least we should have some personal association. I'm just praying, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, um, my plan is to instead of going to Chicago right away, I'm going to come to Dallas. Sure, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I got sick last time. I was supposed to come, but I didn't. Totally fine, Guru Maharaj. You, you, it's, uh, it's all right, and uh, you are safe. And happy. but you, you have a, such a wonderful temple president. He's very spiritually advanced. Yes, Guru Maharaj. He's a very wonderful devotee. He's he's good. I guess he's busy, but he is very good association. <laughs> Yes, Guru Maharaj. Sri, Sri Devi is pushing her hand button again. Okay. Sri Devi Mataji, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much for your kind indulgence, Guru Maharaj. Um, just on this topic of what Srimati was saying, it just sparked some of my thinking. Guru Maharaj, you said, look back and see where you were a year ago. That's true compared to where we all were, say, the beginning of our Krishna consciousness and so on. Definitely, we can see we have made at least some little advancement. But somehow, uh, when I look at the present, I'm always unhappy. I think, oh my God, I have so many anarthas to overcome. This is such a abominable condition to be in and I never feel any sense of satisfaction or any kind of uh, that's I good mean, what <laughs> good it's good yeah because of the yeah we talk about that that's in the uh, Brihad Bhagavatam Rita where Gopal Kumar no matter what level of spirituality he attained 
he was never satisfied because he hadn't reached his perfectional stage yet. So that dissatisfaction is an inspiration to uh, make advancement. It's not an it's not an it's not a situation where you just lament your condition. It's an inspiration for moving forward. If you see it like that, it's good. So this kind of dissatisfaction is good. Okay. I am. Thank you. Yeah, but if you become complacent, then. And you can't take advantage. Get, get morose then. Get a little discouraged rather than inspired. Feel a little bit. Oh my gosh, this is like next to impossible. You know how are we going to get over this now? It's like one thing after yeah, the gopis, another. Gopis feel like that too. They can't. They try everything they do. They get Krishna, and they always feel like we can never get Krishna. But still, once in a while, they get him. When they do, they feel happy, and then he leaves again. That's Bhakti. Okay, Guru Maharaj, if you say so. <laughs> My humble obeisance. It's not a matter of me saying so. <laughs> it's in the Shastra. <laughs> Read Briyad Bhagavatamrita, the life of Gopal Kumar. It's right there. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. A, de a, devotee is, a devotee is happy wherever they are, but at the same time dissatisfied that they're not, in a, not more advanced than they are. That's the thing. It's not that they feel dissatisfied or morose, but they they're not they're not satisfied simply by where they are. They want to make more advancement. They want to do more service. They want to do better service. All of these things bring the soul to life. And when one thinks like that, then Krishna arranges for these things to take place. If you get complacent and thinking I'm okay, then uh, you'll gradually start to uh, feel morose. So you're ready for your next move. No, anyway. <laughs> just do do your best for where you are right now and Krishna will take you to the next stage thank you so much Guru Maharaj thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you thank you to infinity Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj uh, I know it's 22 past. Can I have one question, Guru Maharaj? Actually, I have many, but I would like to limit it to one, if possible, please. Yeah. So, uh, Guru Maharaj, um, uh, see, when we talk about demigod worship, I just have one thing uh, uh, in my mind. Uh, even like at our home also, we have uh, deities or like photos and pictures and of demigods because I used to worship them 15 years back or from childhood yeah, till until last 15 years and when I now I just have them on our altar don't worship just like offer the flowers like we offer to Krishna we just offer but only prayer to them is I have two prayers to them one I say thanks to them that because of them I could get mercy of Krishna. And uh, second, I pray that uh, please, because you are also Vaishnavas, uh, please give your blessings so I can serve nicely to Krishna. Uh, and I could not move away from this devotion. Nice. So is that okay? Or is that's that also nice. considered worship? No, that's nice. 
you're not worshiping them. You're appreciating the mercy that they gave you, and you're also playing for, for more mercy. Uh -huh. It's not about them, it's about uh, taking, taking the opportunity of their mercy to uh, make advancement towards Krishna consciousness. That's good. That's okay. Thank you. But it's, not about, it's not about worship. The word bhajate means to worship and that is exclusively for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yes. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Okay, thank you very much. We'll see you all tomorrow. Yeah, with verse 96 onwards. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Anant Koti Vaishnava Brand Ki Jai. Mother, Mother Vishali, Hare Krishna, nice to see you. Hare Krishna Maharaj Ji, please accept my humble advances. Sorry I haven't been able to